um, yes, indeed, it's quite intimidating to, to tell you about how I came to mathematics. Uh, but uh, I am a bit in a different uh, level as my predecessors in the sense that I really became a researcher in mathematics when uh, I was one. I mean, I never thought about uh, becoming a researcher in mathematics uh, before I actually had a position at CNRS. And so how can this happen? Uh, I was, uh, you know, quite good in science and mathematics. I was not the top top, but, you know, I was always kind of good. And um, I wanted to become an engineer. And in France, if you want to, you know, be a top engineer, you, the best way, at least at my time, was to do what we call école préparatoire. So it's after high school. You have two years of intense training. And then you do what we call the concours and to enter the best school. And, you know, then we, we have the choice among the, those that we, uh, where we succeeded. And uh, I was very lucky. I, I uh, could go to Ecole Polytechnique, which was my dream, because Ecole Polytechnique is kind of top university to become an engineer. And then I kind of was accepted also to Ecole Normale Supérieure, uh, which is the best school somehow to become a researcher. But of course, it's not completely like, you know, you go in one school and you become uh, en engineer or researcher. So there was some possibility of going, you know, to do, do research after Polytechnic or to uh, become an engineer after uh, Ecole Normale Supérieure. And the point was that if I was going to Ecole Polytechnique, I would have to do my military service because it's a military school. And um, so <laughs> that was a big point in my decision. So I decided to go to Ecole Normale Supérieure, you know, thinking, OK, afterwards, I can still become an engineer. And then I started to do uh, math intensively. And uh, I really found out that I, I really loved it. So I was kind of surprised and I thought, OK, so maybe I can do a PhD and I can still become an engineer afterwards. And <laughs> so I did my PhD and uh, I chose the topic, which is probability. And probability is very nice because it's connected with many different science, so physics, uh, computer science. And in math, it's, con it's you know, you economics as well. And in math, it co it's connected with many uh, other domains. So, and I met uh, my PhD advisor, which was uh, with Gérard Benarus, and uh, he told me, you know, about very fancy stuff, about, you know, finding uh, gas in desert and lots of very fancy things. And I thought, OK, let's try to do that. And then I started working on spin glasses. So spin glasses, uh, is a kind of the prehistory, it's connected with neural network and what we know now as deep learning. And at that time there was uh, more or less uh, very little, uh, maybe no uh, mathematical result uh, on spin glasses. Well, there were a few, but I mean, compared to what is known nowadays, it's, uh, it's, uh, very it was very scarce. And, um, and so, you know, I was just following what my advisor would say, and I only realized afterwards, you know, the, the, the it was very uh, very challenging topic. And uh, what is nice with a very challenging topic is that uh, even if you do very little, it's still a lot because nobody did anything before. And uh, so, so I was lucky enough that uh, I could do something uh, on this uh, uh, spin glasses, and then I was just hired by CNRS before I finished my PhD. So that's how I became a researcher in mathematics, and since then I've been, I've been very happy uh, being a researcher in mathematics because, as was already said, I mean it's, it's just beautiful. Uh, you are playing all your life with concept, and you are meeting beautiful people. You are traveling, and I think that uh, yeah, it's just. Uh, I mean, we have heard a lot about it, but uh, being a researcher is uh, very. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun and a lot of creativity and a um, lot of traveling and meeting people. And uh, sometimes, yes, as we said, there is this, you know, this time where you see a, a nice idea coming in and, and you can see maybe it will solve your problem and maybe not. And, you know, you play with that. And maybe at some point everything goes together, like in this very nice music that we just heard and kind of everything makes sense. So that's uh, the, the beauty of mathematics. Mm -hmm. And um, what can I say else? So I think I, I, I said more, more or less everything I wanted to say. I think that uh, in mathematics you have to be bold, I mean, not be afraid of 
um, attacking questions, you know, which are supposed to be hard. We already heard that. Uh, I was very lucky, and you need to have luck, because I, um, I started my research in an area which is uh, very really growing, which has been, uh, you know, developing a lot. Uh, after spin glasses, I started working on random matrices, which is a, a related subject. So random matrices are just a, a matrix, uh, but you, you take uh, the entries at random. For instance, it's data that has noise, and you try to understand what was the data without the noise, you know, to, to find out the data. So it's also a topic which has grown a lot. And, um, and then what I did was to travel. So in my life, uh, traveling, uh, long travels were very important in my mathematical life. I went to uh, the States three times, uh, so in 1995, uh, at NYU, at Current Institute. And there I could uh, uh, follow courses by Varadhan, who is a, a previous winner of the Abel Prize. And these uh, courses turned out to be very important because when I went back to France, I found out how to you know, apply the ideas of Varadhan, which were in PDE on hydrodynamic limits, to random matrices. So that was kind of my first achievement, important achievement. And then when I went back in 2005 to, to Berkeley on Miller Institute, uh, I, was, uh, I was thinking to work with some people who were very busy, and, and then Von Jones, uh, who is working on subfactor theory, so a very different topic as well, was around too, and he, he, he was kind enough to decide to work with me, so we had lots of coffee, and it was, again, uh, as Ulrich said, it was a, a bridge, because uh, uh, Von Jones was working on subfactor theory, I was in probability, so you know, there was kind of a long distance, but there was random matrices in between, because random matrix are kind of operators, so it's kind of connection, and at the end we could uh, also uh, do some new research on uh, uh, which I would not have done otherwise. And then I went to MIT for three years, and uh, uh, again I had the opportunity to work with people I would never have worked with otherwise. So Edelman and Borodin, and actually also Alessio Figali, uh, who is going to talk tomorrow. Uh, and uh, just because, you know, when, when you're traveling, you're maybe more open and people are more likely to just, you know, take the opportunity that you are around to talk with you. And then uh, you can uh, start completely new research, and that's uh, uh, very motivating. So maybe I think I, yeah, at the conclusion, I think I should say that I, should, I can summarize my advice. It's uh, uh, temerity or boldness, uh, traveling, and uh, enjoying yourself, of course. As we all said, I mean, uh, mathematics are lots of pleasure, and you should never forget that. So thank you very much for your attention.